Today, I'll be telling the story of the fairies of the Merlin's Crag. So long, long ago, about three and a half centuries ago, there was a Scottish man who worked in a farm. Everyone used to call him Ora Man. There were two reasons why they used to call him that. The first reason is that even he doesn't know what his name is, and the second reason is that an Ora Man in Scot in Scottish language means that a person who does all types of all things or odd things for his master. And this man is a perfect example for the Ora Man. So one one day his master told him his master told him to go to the end of the farm and and uh, and bring some peat. He used to do all kinds of odd jobs. So he he even did this. He went to the end of the farm and he took all the peat. He worked so hard that he got all of the peat on his uh, on his vehicle and then he went to and then while he was going to his master's home, in the way he found a t- tiny little woman. She was so tiny that. Uh, Uh, she was so tiny that she could uh, sh- she could just uh, stand on a rock and still be invisible to an eye and then uh, the oraman was so ap- uh, surprised to to see that tiny woman and then he he was shocked and asked oh, what are you then the tiny the tiny woman said who am i is unnecessary but she looked like a fairy who am i is unnecessary um and why did you take all the peat off our roof Uh, would you even feel the same would you even uh, would you even feel happy if if i if i even if uh, if i even uh, to call the roof of your house would you feel happy then the oraman said no ma'am i will place them back again but oraman did not know what were those creatures so without asking any any questions the fa- um, the the woman herself was very intimidating so without asking any questions he went to the he went back to the end of the field and laid and laid down all the peat and then he went to the master's house then he said everything which happened and then he also mentioned that those tiny little creatures of women they actually looked like uh, fairies and his master they, he did not believe him at all fairies who who do i look to uh, what do i look to you a, fo- a fool man a fool um then the the uh, and the master also continued that don't make such don't say, uh, don't make such ridiculous excuses for your laziness i want the work done right away then the man was too scared to again enter that place but uh, with a force but uh, uh, but his master forced them so much that he uh, all his fear was left behind and he, and he finished the task this time surprisingly there was no one uh, i mean there were no creatures of tiny of tiny women standing in his way saying don't take that back and keep it and, and keep it and keep it in the farm again so he thought that he really was dreaming and and he has been collecting peat from the pot for a, for a year, for a year now and um, after after one year uh, one day he had, he had finished all his work as usual and he again returned to this master's house to say that he has finished all his work and asked his, and asked his permission if he could return to his home his master said Oh definitely I am very pleased with your work in the past year and I will be I will be I will reward you I will reward you with this uh, can of milk please accept this and then the uh, the oraman accepted it with the utmost with the utmost happiness and he was going ex- he was he was so excited to um, to see how is uh, how happy his wife and his child could be while he was walking his way to the to his house he felt that his house was more than far away than usual and he felt more tired and that he will be become more tired and so sleepy that he could not even take a single step forward so he decided to rest under the shade of a tree so he he sat and he fell and he fell asleep too fast and he he woke up after after some time and he noticed many 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 of those uh, tiny creatures tiny creatures standing before him and from now he 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 started to call those things as fairies so he, he was he was wondering uh, how come there were so many fairies here am i am i still dreaming again what is happening to me then the fairy said no you are not dreaming and we are real and after that the fairies uh, they started to play a song and they also danced it. they also danced it for that the song was so pleasant that uh, even he even the oraman danced along um, that even uh, while dancing um, the pleasure which he was getting was so high that he was not uh, he he did not even know for how much time he was dancing and after some time he was taken down under the earth and now he saw all types of magic 
those little fairies are doing are doing many odd, odd things in there but he never said a thing when he came he never said a thing to the people on earth when he came out of there because he gave a promise to a uh, to a fairy down there that he should never say to anyone uh, on earth what happened here and what he saw here and he he kept he kept his promise and when he, and when he returned to earth uh, i mean on the ground of the earth he continued he continued his journey to the to his house and he thought that only a day passed but when he reached his home he was surprised to know that seven full years were passed uh, so that's uh, so one night under the earth means seven years in the on the real earth and his son grew so old um, even his his wife was uh, his wife so his wife his wife was so angry at him for not visiting the home for seven full years but for him it was just a night so the moral is that we should never mess with nature if we are being cruel with nature even the nature will be cruel with us and that can ruin our lives thank you